Hey there, Dr. Ray here, founder of The Learning Liaisons, and in this video, I'm gonna test your skills when it comes to algebra on your teacher certification exam. So it doesn't matter if you're studying for the CBEST, the FTCE, the Praxis, the Texies, whatever you, acronym you wanna throw out there, this will help you. So what's gonna happen in this video is I'm gonna give you a sample set of five questions that cover the topic of algebra. So remember, you're not going to see these five questions on this on your exam, but I guarantee you, you're gonna see the same skill because it's on the test blueprint. Doesn't matter what state you're testing in, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna challenge you with these five questions. What I want you to do first is I want you to stop this video and I want you to grab some paper and a pencil. Obviously, we don't do math and ink. I'm sure you had teachers that tell you that. Grab yourself a piece of paper and a pencil. What's gonna happen is we're gonna put up five questions, one at a time. So the first question will come on the screen. What I want you to do is I want you to hit that pause button, right? And I want you to give yourself about 90 seconds to two minutes to solve that problem. When you're ready, I want you to hit that play button and our math specialist, Amy, who's featured in all of our math boot camps on our website at thelearningliaisons.com, is gonna go over in detail the solution to that question. When you go over it and you understand it, then you can hit play and the next question will come up on the screen and we'll just rinse and repeat five times. Now, before we jump in those questions, I wanna reiterate this because this is very important. I know a lot of people struggle with math, myself included. That's why I recruit rock star educators that have a passion for their subject right now and are in the classrooms and you're gonna meet Amy here in a second. But I want you to understand the why behind each problem. The reason why I'm saying this, I don't care if you get all five problems wrong. That doesn't matter. What matters is if you leave this video, have a clear understanding of what you need to do to work on that skill. Because once again, you're not gonna see these questions on your test, but you will see the same skill. So without further ado, let's jump into your five practice questions. Before we do that, make sure you like, please like this video, likes are for free. Uh, drop a comment below, let me know what test you're prepping for. Maybe we have some help for you on our website. And thirdly, click that little notification bell on the, on the YouTube video. This way you are notified whenever we have more content like this so we can help you prepare better for your exam. So enough talk, enough babbling, let's get to it. I'm going to read each question aloud and then we're going to break it down. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression shown above? The expression we've been given is 3x squared plus 4x in parentheses minus 13 minus 6x in parentheses. If we think about what this is asking us to do, it's asking us to simplify it or look for what is equivalent to that expression. So it looks like what they've done in all of our answer choices, we always wanna look at our answer choices to kind of help us, is they've combined some things. So let's rewrite this expression, 3x squared plus 4x minus 13 minus 6x. The first thing I'm gonna do is use PEMDAS or order of operations to see if I can't do anything inside those parentheses. In this parenthesis, I can't combine anything because I can only combine things that are like terms. And squared and normal x are not alike, so I can't combine them. 13 minus 6x, I can't combine anything in there either because we've got a constant and a number with a variable. Remember, you can only combine things that have like terms, so variables with the same exponents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this negative imaginary one because we're subtracting this entire thing. We're not just subtracting the 13. So we're going to distribute the negative one to everything and I'm gonna keep everything else the same. 3x squared plus 4x minus 13 because a negative times a positive is a negative, plus 6x because a negative times a negative is a positive. Now what I can do is I can look for like terms. 4x and 6x are alike, so I can combine them. Plus 4x plus 6x is going to give us plus 10x minus 13. Don't make the mistake of when you add x's, they become x squareds. That's not the case. 
When you add X's, they just stay as X's. When you add variables, they just stay as variables. They don't change the variable. The only thing that changes is your constant. So 3X squared plus 10X minus 13 is the correct answer. Identify the algebraic expression equivalent to the following. So we've got this algebraic expression here, and in order to simplify it, we must get common denominators. Otherwise, we can't simplify it. So I notice that this has x squared and this has xy. So I'm looking for what is each of them missing that the other one needs to create a common denominator. Well, if I multiply this by x over x, that would give me a denominator of x squared y. And if I multiply this by y over y, that would give me a denominator of x squared y. So x squared y would be our common denominator. Now remember, if we multiply something by a value of one, which x divided by x equals one, and y divided by y equals one, then we're not changing the core value of that item. So when we multiply fractions, we're just gonna multiply straight across. So I get seven y over x squared y minus three x over x squared y because x times x is x squared. Now I can go ahead and subtract. 7y minus 3x divided by x squared y, and I cannot combine 7y and 3x because they are not common or they're not like terms. The x and the y make them not like terms. So 7y minus 3x divided by x squared y is the correct answer. Identify the expression equivalent to 7 over x plus 3 over y. So they're wanting us to identify the expression here that's equivalent or equal to or the same as this expression right here. Well, to do that, we need to be able to get common denominators, and here's why. I cannot add fractions together or subtract fractions together unless they have denominators that are the same. Well, to make these denominators the same, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply them each by a value of one. Because if I multiply them by a value of one, then I can, I'm not changing the value of that fraction because anything times one is itself. So if I multiply this fraction by y over y, y divided by y is one because anything divided by itself is one. By doing that, I'm gonna get my denominator x, y. So if I multiply this side by x divided by x, I'm gonna end up with the same denominator, x, y. And that's the goal. Well, how did I come up with that? I just took the two denominators and I multiplied them together. So what we're gonna end up with on this side is seven y, because seven times y is seven y, divided by x y, plus three times x is three x, divided by x y. I'm gonna reverse the order of those because multiplication is commutative, which means I can multiply in any order. Three times four is 12, four times three is 12. Y times x is y x, x times y is x y. Now I can go ahead and add, but when I add fractions together, I do not change the denominator. The denominator stays the same, and I add the tops, 7y plus 3x. Now, you're thinking, could I combine those? Could that become 10xy? It cannot, because this variable is not the same as this variable. And because of that, we can only add or subtract things that are alike. So because of that, this is actually our final answer, which means that D is our final answer. They included A because they expected some people to think that they could add the seven and the three together and smush the X's and the Y's together, but that is not the case. So D is our final answer. 
which of the following expressions is equivalent to the expression above? So the expression that we have up here is 4 fifths parentheses 15 thirds x minus 10 close parentheses plus 3 halves parentheses 4 ninths x plus 4 close parentheses. As we look at this, I'm immediately going to think, can I combine anything inside my parentheses first? Because I'm going to do parentheses first, because the order of operations doesn't change just because we've got fractions. So I'm going to look at the parentheses. And inside those parentheses, there's nothing that we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and write my expression and then begin to simplify. The next thing that I've noticed is that I've got a fraction or a number being multiplied by a set of parentheses here and here. So what we're going to do is we're going to distribute that or multiply it through. We've talked about that in the lesson and in other practice problems. So we're going to distribute or multiply it by everything that's inside. So when we multiply fractions, we can literally just multiply straight across. So I'm going to have 4 times 15, and you can use your calculator for that, and that gives us 60 divided by 15x, because I literally just multiplied straight across. 4 fifths times negative 10 is definitely going to be a negative, because a negative times a positive is a negative. And when I multiply a fraction by a constant, or a number, I can put that number divided by 1. So 4 times 10 is 40, 5 times 1 is 5. And I'm going to do the same process with this set. I'm going to distribute it through 3 times 4 is 12, 2 times 9 is 18, plus put that 4 over 1. So I have 3 halves times 4 divided by 1, because 4 divided by 1 is the same thing as 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 1 is 2. Now, before I begin to simplify this, I am going to go ahead and see if there's any fractions that I can simplify even further. Like 12 divided by 2 is just 6. I can already see that. 40 divided by 5 is 8. I can already see that. 60 divided by 15, well, if I think about that, I know that 15 times 4 was 60, so 60 divided by 15 is going to be 4x. Plus 12 divided by 18, I can simplify that. It's not going to give me a whole number, but I can definitely simplify it. And simplifying looks like dividing the top and the bottom by the same number. It's kind of the reverse of multiplying it by the same number. So I can divide them both by 3. And if I divide it by 3 divided by 3, I'm dividing it by a value of 1, which is not changing its core value. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 18 divided by 3 is 6. And would you look at that? We can simplify it again. 4 divided by 2. 6 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I'm left with 2 thirds x plus 6. Now I'm going to combine things that are alike. So I can combine the negative 8 and the positive 6, and I can combine the 4x and the 2 thirds x. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, so I can already cross off b and d because they have positive 2s. So I know it's going to be a or c. And then 4x plus 2 thirds x. Well, I'm going to have to convert the 4 into a fraction that has a denominator of 3 because when we add or subtract fractions, they have to have like denominators. Well, I'm going to multiply 4 times 3 divided by 3, which is going to give me 12x divided by 3 plus 2 thirds x minus 2. 12 plus 2 is 14x divided by 3 minus 2. So our answer is C. It's a big process. However, if you do it step by step and you keep practicing these kinds of problems, you are going to rock this section of your test. Identify the algebraic expression equivalent to m divided by p plus 5 divided by 2m.
what we're looking at here is we're looking for the expression equivalent to this. So I'm going to rewrite the expression so that I have room to work. And with this, you cannot add fractions if you don't have common denominators. So I can't just add p plus 2m and 5 plus m. So with that said, and I can't just smush these two together and get m plus 5 equals 2mp. To add fractions, you must have common denominators. So that said, the bottoms have to be the same. So I have to multiply each fraction by a value of 1 to get a common denominator. So I'm going to literally just multiply these two together and get 2mp as my denominator. Well, what do I need to multiply this fraction by to get 2mp? It needs a p. So I'm going to multiply it by p divided by p. And this one needs 2m. So I'm going to multiply it by 2m. So I'm going to multiply each fraction by what it doesn't have. So I'm going to multiply this one by p divided by p because p divided by p is 1. And anything times 1 is itself. I'm going to multiply this one by 2m divided by 2m. This is going to give me m times m is m squared because m squared means this two times. So I'm going to have 2m squared divided by 2mp plus 5 times p is 5p divided by 2mp. Now I can go ahead and add those together. When I add fractions, the denominator stays the same and I just add the tops. So I have 2m squared plus 5p. I cannot combine those because they don't have the same variables, so they are not like terms. So my answer is D. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that small sample set of algebra problems. Remember, we have a wide array of comprehensive video boot camps on our website. The link is below all of our video descriptions here on our YouTube channel. But once again, I wanna know how you did. Drop a comment below. Let me know how many problems you got right. But remember, it doesn't matter if you got them all wrong. What matters is that why, right? So at the end of the day, if you understand how the skill behind algebra and those specific word problems, it doesn't matter what the state throws at you on your actual exam, you're going to know that skill. But the key is don't try to do math problems over and over again because obviously you're going to get them right, right? But what I challenge you is look for other problems that cover that topic. You got to know the concept at the base. Big philosophy here that drives all of our courses, the learning liaisons, is knowledge, skill, and attitude. You got to know about your specific exam, right? Meaning like how many questions you need to write to pass, what's the content on there, with the number of questions in each competency, right? You not have to have a skill, which is strategy. And then most importantly is attitude. So knowledge, skill, and attitude. Attitude is confidence, especially when it comes to math you got to have a high level of confidence in order to be able to attack different problems that look different ways in different situations. But at the core, you know that math skill and you're good at it. So it doesn't matter what the question looks like, you're going to knock it out of the park. So hopefully you learned something from Amy and myself here in this video. Great job. Let us know a couple things in that comment box, what test you're prepping for and how many questions you get right. But once again, I don't care if I get them all wrong as long as you know the why and work on that concept. Great job, folks. And always remember, it's when you pass, not if you pass your certification exams. Catch you in the next video.